Good evening to y'all. Good evening. Our host is correct. And yet, no. From the beginning of this adventure, we are having together that there was an element of these first conversations that seemed more like a tutorial setting on a computer program rather than the actual program running. When you are installing a new program, you have the option of having a walkthrough where tools are pointed out to you and you experiment with the tools following simple instructions in order to understand how the tools work for you to be able to be more creative further down the line. Interestingly, with this form of communication, the program was installed on both ends and the tools were being experimented with on both ends. Your host, the vessel, has had a period of adjustment And we have had a period of adjustment and you with whom we are communicating have had a period of adjustment in which we have all gotten to know more or less the basics of this new form of rendezvous. It is not for nothing or for entertainment alone, although we find ourselves very entertaining, but it is not for entertainment alone that we spend time with you in this manner. There has been and is Another motive for our interactions. One of these has been revealed, of course, in us wanting you to know that you are the creator of your reality. You are the one that gets to choose what is presented to you. You are the one who is choosing our expression to be presented to your consciousness at this moment in time, which is all consciousness at this moment in time, which we must remind you, there is no time. And you, as a collective, even as this particular portion of the micro collective, are choosing not only to know that you choose, but to know that you, as individuals, are an important part of a change that is occurring, that you are wishing to occur, that you are choosing to occur. And that you have the power to bring within to your reality in an imminent now. We did not talk on your November 11th event that you had on your Monday. For we have explained in the past that the significance that you give to dates and times are significant in only that you give them significance, which does not make them insignificant. In fact, it makes them eternally powerful 
However, there was enough of a pull and draw in that direction at that time for in the specifics, this group to make the shifts necessary within themselves to move to their next level of being. Normally we allow you questions and we will, but first we have one question that we would like to leave you to ponder during this transmission and beyond. And the question is, are you ready to be what you came here to be? Are you ready to choose to be what you came here to be? And are you presently choosing a reality in which you will have the illusion of no longer having the luxury to choose? We see you edging towards that choice. And we see how you have all got your spandex uniforms and capes ready to become the superheroes that you are. And it will mean giving up the idea that you are anything but what you came here to be. The collective energy of anticipation and focus that will arrive on your planet on January the 1st is another one of those spikes and peaks where your consciousness is united in a singular goal. and another opportunity to make a concrete choice as to whether one is going to continue to live as if they are less than superhuman or to know that to be human is already full of all those superhuman traits. Those who hear this message did not come to enjoy themselves. However, there is joy to be had, but you did not come for the sake of enjoying yourself. For your joy is the service, as is ours. We would now open this conversation to anything that is on your minds or queries or expressions that you would like to share at this time. Thank you. Michelle, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question?
I will unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I, my question that I have is in regards to sleep. Um, what is your, what, um, there are times when um, one might be very excited, so to speak, at nighttime when logically to go to sleep would make sense because of what's to come in the mornings. Um, however, sometimes it feels more in alignment to stay up. What, what do you have to say in terms of sleep right now? We would say that your body is far more wise than your society and whatever it is that you are doing in the morning that is interrupting your sleep is more of an interruption than the interruption that you're having naturally by your body. This is not a satisfactory answer if one does not feel that they can alter their morning experience. But your body is very wise and to force oneself to sleep or to force oneself to eat or to force oneself into any other for function of maintenance of the human body is a form of plugging one's ears to a divine wisdom. There are, of course, ways and perhaps behaviors or situations that are not aiding in your rhythms. There are stimulants, there is caffeine and other things that you are accustomed to using that should you eliminate from your diet would potentially aid in you being able to negotiate with your body in a different manner. But we would say that following one's inspiration, especially excitement, even if it leads into the small hours of the morning, will only occur several times before the body no longer wants that pattern if that pattern is not beneficial to the body. However, if it is beneficial to the body, one can stay up all night and sleep or only two hours and still function, perhaps not in the same way, but no less than they had in another circumstance. If you are wanting to tell your body what to do, there are ways of doing so. If you are wanting to find more alignments, then it is time to listen to your body. And the key to your question is the fact that you use the word logical. The moment you think that anything is logical, you can almost be certain that it is not. Does this help with your question? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, so I have a question for both of us. Um, we have been dealing with um, a fatigue and weakness of our bodies for quite some years now. And we were wondering if you could give us some clarification or advice to alleviate this. 
The body is your ally. The fatigue is pointing to doing less physically. And in many ways is serving you in the times that it serves. It also is related to certain structures and codifications in the physical form that some of you have come with that are not entirely supported by both your societal structures and the nature of what it means to sustain human life on your planet. Humans are an interesting animal on your planet for they are not native to it. And some of you are less native to it on a physical level than others. And some of you will feel the effects of that configuration. The ways to alleviate it are first and foremost acceptance of it as a trade-off for some of the less known or less understood benefits of the physical vessels that you are housed in. Mm -hmm. An analogy may be a farm vehicle that is plowing land, plows it very well and is built for that. If you try to do the same work with a sports car, pulling a rake, it will be very inefficient. It will take far more time and be quite exhausting for the sports car. This does not mean there's anything wrong with the sports car. What it means is it is not understanding what it is capable of and is certainly not meant to be plowing a field. Unfortunately, there is little recognition of the version of sports car we are referring to in terms of physical vehicle. There are so many of you who are affected by the same fatigue. It is in part because you are more able to process energies that are not on a visible level and convert those energies into something that can then be transmitted to the so-called tractor but you are still expected to plow the field once you get onto some nice flat asphalt you will feel much better <laughs> And we assure you that you would not be here in the exact configuration that you are if it was not necessary. As the previous question, 
there are things that one can do to negotiate with one's body. And then there are things listening to one's body that one can do if they choose to be in alignment. What is the relevancy of asking questions? Because um, from what I understand is that based on my frequency or my, my beliefs, uh, based on them, I attract the realities. Um, so anything that appears in my awareness is based on the fact of my beliefs. Is that correct? Yes. So why not only choose what I want to believe? instead of asking questions? Yes, why not? <laughs> yeah, so my question is like, <laughs> why are we still communicating with you and asking questions? <laughs> <laughs> if, if there simply is only choosing what to believe? Well, you have not yet believed that that is true. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Until you do so, you will continue to play the game of thinking there is anything to know, which is in itself quite beautiful for it is a theme that is so prevalent in the creation that you have created. It's all very simple. The moment you decide that all of your problems are resolved, and all of the problems of everyone else is resolved, then you will see reality for what it truly is. For you are creating reality, and if you could, and when you could, and you can, circumvent your entire creation to become your preferred creation, then it would. One of the interesting things to see about our creations is that we are deliberately creating them to have something to solve so as to be able to continue to exist. Questions are only necessary in as much as there is someone to question. The last question dissolves when the questioner dissolves. This does not mean existence ceases in that moment. It may or may not, depending on the choice that you make in that moment, to continue the storyline, see how it turns out, or to have some sort of other experience which any form of experience is as valid as the next. We only address the experience that you are currently choosing for us to address. And you only create the experience that you are currently choosing to create. Part of the question asking and answering process is the realization of the fact that there are loopholes in your own consciousness that lead to the deepest understandings of the fact that there is no reality. We do not speak of truth or reality, we speak of no reality. Simultaneous, infinite reality. This concept is like an eraser on a whiteboard mark, on a whiteboard.
It removes everything. And yet, you, I, we, consciousness is so unbelievably creative. Creation is so creative that in its infinite creations, it cannot even eliminate one of them for the whole puzzle would collapse into something. If one reality was eliminated from all of the infinite realities, they would no longer be infinite and suddenly they would all become real. And it would be a horrid mess. A finite reality is far more terrifying than an infinite one. The realization that you are watching your own movie allows you two things. It allows you the freedom to relax and enjoy it. And it allows you the freedom to start messing with the real and telling the director which shots to call and playing a different soundtrack. We can only address one consciousness for, for each of you who is listening, there is only actually one of you who is listening. For each of you has a perception of every other, each of you. And in that perception of one, which is your choice, there is the idea that everyone is having the same experience as you and therefore there are many. But this is both relative and absolute at the same time. There really is only one question. The question is, will you choose to be who you came here to be? For the moment, you make that decision. And unfortunately, until you do choose to be here, you came here to be, that remains the only question. After that choice, there are no questions. And before it, there's only one question. All the other questions... are simply you saying no. No, I would rather focus on something else that is more pressing in my experience. And there is no judgment. Unless you are judging yourself. But we do like this form of question. It is kind of like the end of the Wizard of Oz where the dog is peeking under the curtain saying, well, what is back there? <laughs> and the wizard has all those levers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I feel a call to step up. And um, what that has made me step up to is start channeling again. And uh, what I feel, I don't really stop at anything anymore. I will pursue this and I will evolve. 
but I want to go deeper and I want to know why I'm not able to go deeper at this point. If you are not able to go what you call deeper at this point, it is simply because that is what is serving you the most at this point in time. Whether it's because you are wanting to face the struggle of wanting something and not being able to have what you want immediately, or whether it is because there is some other focus that is pressing upon you that wants to be resolved within you before you commit yourself, as you said, 100% to this direction for yourself. Perhaps it is you wanting to learn the art of being okay with how things are in the moment, which would involve accepting that it is exactly as it is at this time, and that even with your desire for it to be different, it is perfect. It may be many or any of these reasons. And we would say that you can relax. There is no urgency. Your skills are exactly as they need to be in this particular field at this time and valuable and of much benefit to you and those to whom it will be and is of benefit. We applaud your desire to step into more of yourself, to allow more of yourself to make that choice to be who you came here to be and to have worked through any of the perceived blockages that have stopped you in the past. We would say also to expect the unexpected and that it is safe to let go of any form of control in this situation. The discomforts that you're feeling now will not be there for long. Does that feel complete to you? Yes. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. You mentioned earlier that there's only one question. Will you be who you chose? Will you choose who you came here to be? Could you expand a bit more on the who you came here to be part? Yes. Deep within each of your hearts, you know who you are. You know what you came here to be. You have a grandiose and that is not the correct word for you use it in a negative connotation amongst your people, but a grandiose or a grand or a gross, gross in the meaning of the word large. <laughs> your language is complicated. <laughs> Idea of who you are not as an identity, not as a person, not as your name, your actions, your behaviors, the things you do in your day-to-day -day life, but who you are, the miracle that you are, the essence and the 
power and the intention of your life, you have an idea deep within you of who you are. And for many of you, that is a terrifying idea because somehow you believe that if you were allowed to yourself the luxury of wanting that or knowing that or choosing that, somehow you would not be able to live up to that idea of yourself. It's absurd. <laughs> what has happened is you have allowed yourself to be convinced that you are not who you already know yourself to be. You have strength and power and the ability to lead. You have the ability to heal. You have the ability to aid what needs to be aided without looking for people to save. You have the ability to absorb all of the concepts and all of the teachings that you have already heard on a visceral level. You have all been studying for a long time and all know that whatever has resonated with you has come from you. Everything that you admire in the external world, everything that you've seen that you have found to be beautiful, all of these things with which you have resonated in your entire life are simply signals of the beauty and the magnificence and the possibility and capability of you as yourself. Whatever you see outside of yourself that feels good is that you that you came here to be. There's nothing to do once you make this choice, it will all be done for you. But it does involve letting go of everything that you are not. It involves letting go of the opinions that others have of you. It involves letting go of anyone who would not approve. It involves letting go of those things that you already know do not serve you. It might be a job, it might be a relationship, it might be a location. And you know these things. There is no one who is going to tell you who you are. You know who you are. You are just pretending not to. As we said at the beginning of this transmission, you are choosing instead of allowing yourselves to be fully who you are, you are choosing circumstance to push you into a situation where you no longer have to choose because you will have to be who you are or else. This is not a warning. It is just what is happening. And it is, pro it is proven by your newsreels and it is proven by the way things are happening, the violence that is increasing around you. These are not things that are happening outside of you. These are things you are choosing. You are choosing these things so that you can become who you are, so that you can rise to the occasion because without the occasion, you do not believe you could rise. We are saying that you can. You can rise to the occasion without the occasion. And either way is perfect. If you would like to imagine a crisis, small or large, in your life, and we do not mean crisis in the manner of your boss got angry or there wasn't any frozen yogurt at the mall. We mean a crisis on the level of right now, things are happening in your physical environment where people are dying and there is imminent danger and harm. Whatever form of crisis comes to mind is the one that you are most
dissonant or resonant with? Who are you in that crisis situation? Are you cowering in a corner? Or are you helping people out of the burning building? Are you wondering what they think of you? Or are you busy organizing transport to get away from the militants? We know you to be heroes, all of you. We know you to be the best versions of humanity when you choose to be, because you feel like you have no choice and the goodness that is within you spills out to compensate for the darkness you see. This is what we are meaning by choosing and that the time to choose is now and now and now. And it's time to let go of anything that is not your highest version. With such love and appreciation and gratitude for how it has kept you all these years. or not. What if the analogy we gave at the beginning of the session applied not only to channeling communication, which it did, but it also applies to your life? What if up until this moment, your life has been the tutorial version of the program of being you? And now the controls have been handed over to you by the programmer. It said, well, now you know what to do, <laughs> do what you like. <laughs> or more accurately the tutorial level of this game is complete would you like to begin the real game of course you can play the tutorial as many times as you like until you feel comfortable that you know where all the functions are. And we are not saying that that is inaccurate. It is absolutely responsible to make sure that you know what you're doing or not. You could just dive into the game and see what happens. Hope that you remember where 
the different functions are hiding in the interface. There is time for one more question, if there is one. Thank you. Thank you. I'm curious what you meant by some of us are not as native and the idea of something being transmitted to the tractors <laughs> was interesting. Could you expand on that? Although it is still taught in your textbooks, science has discovered that you do not and have not directly evolved from the primates of your planet, although there is in part some of the contribution of these animals in your DNA. Humanity is an experiment. A co-creation by the consciousness that has chosen to be a part of this experiment throughout your history and other consciousness that has contributed in its way. In more recent times, there have been upgrades to the software or hardware in this case that had at times success and failure Please remember that if we are talking in past tense, we are also talking in present tense for what we are now describing is being absorbed by your consciousness in your now and in the consciousness of those involved at the time was there now or is there now. And science is a tricky business, especially when it is being manipulated for science is nature. The nature of your planet, this planet, is not and cannot be the same as the nature of parallel planets, even the parallel planets that are called exactly the same and are inhabited by exactly the same versions of you with a slight difference in that one version of you has a ingrown toenail and one does not, for example. Something as slight as that in the changes of two parallel realities will create an entirely different universe and therefore an entirely different scientific and natural structure of a planet. What we are trying to say is that the merging of timelines is as disruptive to the nature and science of any of the timelines as, let's say, influence from other planets, for example. And so when we say that some of the physical matter here on this planet is not as native as some other, we are implying only that it is not of this timeline directly and there has been some alteration, whether that be in terms of matter that comes from an external source 
to your planet or matter that comes from an external timeline to the timeline that is currently running. And all of this is only relevant in as much as it is being chosen by you at this time as a understanding that you are desiring to have. In your timeline and collective at this time, and for some of you, it is relevant for you to know or believe to know that you are not from here. Both on a spiritual level and as an extra on a physical level. We remind you that physical matter is simply a concentration of consciousness. And so when we are discussing anything of this nature, we are discussing something that is not truly real and therefore completely malleable. In a next moment, the beings we were talking to earlier could change their decision and have a consciousness that thinks that they simply have some sort of disease that can easily be alleviated by eating parsley. There is much suggestion towards beings from other planets and disclosure of the knowing of beings from other planets and the hybridization program that has involved beings from other planets. And this too is a contributing factor to the statement that we expressed earlier. Why has this program been and what was its scope and what was its or what was is its objective? At least on the level and the specifics that we are discussing now was to create humans that were more easily able to tap into their non-physical, physical form for healing and acceleration of activation of what we had then called the tractors on your planet. Does this make sense? Yes, um, just so I understand, you're saying that beings were created that are more connected to their non-physical self to then transmit that concept or idea and to activate the ones that aren't as connected to their non-physical selves? Yes, with the slight correction that we would say that beings chose to be created for that purpose. For they are part of the same program and on many levels, on a specific mission here while in incarnation that they are able to then tap into when and if their own skills are activated. And so the beings that chose to, the, the tractor beings that chose to not be as connected to their non-physical selves, that's, that's all part of just play, like creation just playing with different levels of forgetting. Is that accurate? Yes, absolutely. And there are many who are simply here to be here. There is no scope. Hmm. Is that like saying there are just some beings that are just here to enjoy? Enjoy and or suffer and or experience all the range of human 
emotion. This is the hottest ticket in town. You will find also that there are many who do not want the film to end. And this is why there is duality on your planet at this time. There is a opposition to the awakening and resolution and end of questions. Or then the game would be over for this particular portion of consciousness. This timeline would be different than it is. And there are those who are enjoying this timeline as it is. So when you say you know us to be heroes, you say that because to us it feels the best to be that highest version of ourselves. Not yes, there is no one truly to save. There is a game that you have chosen to come here to play in which you are the heroes. Mm -hmm. As we explained earlier, you can circumvent the whole thing, but then you would not have the opportunity to be what you came here to be. And that comes back to this concept of being a hero. If you chose tomorrow to end all of the suffering of the planet, you could, and you would have to do nothing except be it into awareness. You are also a rock. Did you know that? You are also a rock right in this moment. You are the consciousness of a rock right in this moment. And the rock is blissfully happy. The rock is not ignorant. It is simply done with the game on such a deep and profound level that it is here to just be. Perhaps it is mind and there is suffering that occurs around it and it is sold at Tiffany's, but it is here to just exist. The beings that you believe are in the veil of forgetting are oftentimes the most enlightened creatures you will ever meet, for they are not trying, and they are not in any form of illusion of what their life is. They are just here to be. Of course, it is all a matter of perspective. In the game that you are playing, there is some amazing thing happening, and it is. And you get to be a part of that, and that is why you came, and it is so exciting. And the time is now. When we first started our transmissions, we told you that it was time to celebrate and relax, and we think now that the summer holidays are over. <laughs> And with that, we wish you the most amazing night and week. And send you all the love that you know you already are. And I know. <laughs>